You're a councilman and a student here. I am, yes. Okay. Uh, I am uh, slightly older than the average uh, daytime student. I'm um, 33. Somewhere in between my congressional run and my city council run, I bought a new car. And I still had the dealer tags on it. And uh, I was a sales executive for Apple at the time. I was coming back from the city. Uh, I just uh, driven across the George Washington Bridge and Route 4 was blocked off. So it forced me on the 80. So knowing I was unfamiliar, I said, well, let me just pull over onto the shoulder and let me readjust my, my GPS. Because what do they say? Don't be a distracted driver. And next thing you know, I'd say I'm sitting there 30 seconds. I see blue lights. And the officer comes in, he taps on my passenger side window with something. And I roll down the window and I said, you know, officer, I'm okay. All is well. I'm just adjusting my GPS. First thing he asked me, is this your car? Now, I was somewhat taken aback by that, uh, but I recognized it, it's, it's a reality today. But then he started to probe and ask questions, where are you coming from? And because I had nothing to hide, I answered them. And I said to him, I said, well, I just came from a late uh, lunch in the city. They went into the early evening. Uh, I had some clients out. And he said, OK, um, did you have anything to drink? And I said, well, you know, we ate. And yes, I, you know, I, I, I had a cocktail. And he says, uh, I'm going to administer a field sobriety test. Now, I haven't been, I wasn't driving, <laughs> right? And he, he walks around the car. He reaches in, unbuckles my seatbelt, opens the door, and pulls me out. And now I'm agitated. And I'm agitated for a couple of reasons. I'm agitated, one, because I didn't do anything to deserve this. I'm agitated because I know my rights, and I know they're being violated. But even in that instance, I felt helpless because I'm on the street. On the street, the police officer is in charge. And now the bravado is, is kind of coming out. And he's being anything but pleasant. And I said, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to call my attorney, I want to call my, my state senator, and I want to call my assembly person. Uh, because I don't know what's happening, all I know is that my rights are being violated. You can't call anyone. I said, then I'm going to get my phone and I'm going to record this. You can't record this. I said, well, is it being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. So he goes, uh, goes on to administer uh, a series of, of different tests. So when he has me do the, uh, I guess, the walk the line, I look out. Now I'm wearing driving loafers. Uh, I'm not ashamed of that. <laughs> I own a couple pair, but I'm wearing driving loafers with the little dots on the bottom. And he's got me on the edge. I said, you want me to walk a straight line right here on this pitch where it goes down and there's gravel in these shoes? He says, well, you said that you were a Marine. You know how to follow orders. And I said, yes, I know how to, I know how to follow orders. He says, well, walk this line. So I proceed to walk the line marching, calling, at, calling cadence left, right, left, right, left, right, about, you know, doing about face and march back. And I'm really <laughs> at... That's my way of, of showing how frustrated I am because he's, he, it's like he's pulled that card. And, you know, after he goes through all these different tests and he goes through the light tests and so on and so forth, I keep saying to him, are you sure this is being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. Stop asking that question. He says, here's your last test. I want you to turn around, interlock your fingers behind your head and bend over. And as I'm doing it, I said, what kind of sobriety test is this? And he slaps bracelets oh, on me. Oh, man. And he doesn't Mirandize me. He just says, uh, I'm putting you in the back of my car. So at this time, another car has come up. So then they drive me down. It's the New Jersey State Trooper. They drive me down to Newark. They put me in a holding cell. They uh, handcuff my ankles. And I said, what have I done? I don't even know why I'm here. All I know is that you violated my rights. He closes the door. So ultimately, after about 20, 25 minutes, he comes in. Um, and then he starts talking to me as if we're buddy buddy, and he's like, "Well, you know, look, you know, you're making this really hard on yourself. You know, you could have been much more agreeable back there." I said, "What did I do?" And he says, "Will you submit to a sobriety test?" I said, "What are my rights?" And he says, um, "If you don't answer yes or no to this, then you are refusing the sobriety test." So I said, "Listen, I was United States Marine. I served my country. You wear a uniform. Just for a second, let's just take a pause." Why don't you tell me what my rights are? Tell me why I'm here, and then we can, you know, go about this. Well, you didn't, uh, you didn't say yes, so you have uh, refused to take the sobriety test. Then he calls my wife. Uh, oh, at man. this point in time, it's in the late evening, if not early morning, and he says, 
your husband has been arrested for a DUI. But here's the kicker. The kicker is, I got all these things, and of course, I'm now going to go to court. I called my state assemblyman. He said, uh, here's an attorney that I know. I go to this attorney who's a, a prominent attorney in Burton County. He hears the story, and he says, okay, do you want to fight this? I said, I did nothing wrong. He looks at me and says, you know, you're black. You were driving, you know, fancy car. All the evidence is stacked against you, and then they say that you refused you know, a breathalyzer. I said, I didn't refuse anything. I just wanted to know what my rights were. We get to court. I think it's our third court appearance. Uh, we have requested all the evidence. We requested the videotape. Somehow there's no videotape. They can't find the audio. They can't find the video. We requested the, the footage from the holding cell. They can't find that. My attorney turns to me and says, they're going to have to dismiss the case because they don't have one. The prosecutor looks at the judge and says, judge, um, I think you're conflicted in this and that you need to transfer it to another uh, another municipality. The judge says, what are you talking about? He says, well, you know, Mr. Castle uh, ran for Congress in 2012, and you had said that you had seen him when he came to speak at your church. You didn't interact with him. You didn't give him any money, anything of that nature. But, but the mere fact that you are aware of who he is, uh, you have a conflict of interest. And I don't know, maybe the judge just felt as if he didn't, he wanted to be above reproach and he didn't want to fight this battle, so he he sent it to another municipality. Wow. So now we're going on to another month and another month. And it's, you know, we're in the, in the winter. And then we get to the other municipality and they still haven't presented anything. But now the judge knows the story of what happened. And I'm standing up there with my attorney and the judge looks at me and he says, I humbly apologize on behalf of the state of New Jersey that we had to waste your time. You don't have a record. You've never done anything. You were driving your own vehicle. Uh, and for some reason, we as a state can't produce evidence that shows that you're guilty. He says, I wish you Godspeed. And if you ever need a witness as to uh, how in inappropriate this was, don't hesitate to reach out. And he dismissed everything. But at the end of it, all I kept thinking about was, if someone like myself who knows their rights and I can still be taken advantage of, any young man or woman can have the exact same thing done. And what I took away from that was, now when the police approach me, I don't want to be cooperative. I don't want to answer their questions. I don't want to be bothered. Because if I can be in a scenario where I did absolutely nothing wrong, where my actions are above reproach, and I can still be taken advantage of, it does not give me faith and confidence in law enforcement.